For those boxing fans that have been waiting for this moment, um, wait no further because the IBO Super Welterweight Champion, Sam, Sam Eggington, joins me to the right. Challenger, Dennis Hogan. Um, Australian fight fans will be more than familiar um, with Dennis. Sammy, I'm going to start with you. Um, you've only fought outside of England twice before uh, and you find yourself in Australia for the first time. i um, glad to see, first of all, that the weather's turned it on for you. Yeah. It's a big trip to come down here and defend that belt for the first time, isn't it? Yeah, it's... it's um... It's an experience, so I mean, like you say, it's, I've, I fought out of, I fought out of England twice, you know, and it's gone well twice. Um, I'm here to make it an trick and you know, being in Australia is, like I say, it's it's an experience that I'll be able to take with me. For those that aren't familiar with your achievements so far, you've done just about everything um, in the super welterweight division. You are a former European chairman, champion, former Commonwealth champion. What did it mean to you to win this belt in your last outing? Um, the vacant IBO Super Welterweight belt against Premislav Zisk, um, an undefeated fighter, 18 and 0. Your last two wins have come against undefeated fighters. A tough, willing opponent, but when you win a world title, it's a life changing moment for a fighter. It is. It's, um, and I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't think I realised it until you know, the, you know, I secured it. Um, you know, the camp was normal, you know, the training was normal. Um, I didn't feel any different. It was just another fight. Um, but then, you know, when, when I got the decision, you know, it was, a, it was a huge moment and I did have to sit back and think, you know, we'd, we'd done this and it, it was, a, yeah, it was crazy. It's obviously one thing to win a belt, it's another thing to defend it. The man on my left desperately wants to take that belt from you. Um, Dennis, I'll get to you in a moment, but you would be familiar with Dennis, Dennis's career. Had a couple of shots at winning a world title. Um, he wants this, I imagine, as much as you wanted it. How do you prepare yourself to defend a world title for the very first time against a man that feels that he should have won one so far? Listen, I, I, I tell everyone, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't train different. You know, I always train hard. Um, you know, so whether that was Dennis Hogan, you know, the fight before that, the fight before that, it, it, my, my training camps are all are all the same practically. You know, I train hard. You know, we have little things for, for certain opponents, but nothing changes. You know, every, whether I'm a four-rounder at the bottom of the card or I'm a 12-rounder at the top of the card, um, I put everything in and I make sure that, that nothing's left, you know, to chance. So, so yeah, it don't, really, it, it don't change much. Um, but like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm here to defend the belt and, and that's, what I, that's what I'll do. Dennis... We know that um, you should have been a world champion in a fight against Jamie Mungia. We've spoken about it plenty of times before. Um, you've had a couple of shots at winning the world title. To see this one, I know at this stage of your career, there are only so many chances you're going to get. How much do you want that belt and how hard is it to take it off this man? Well, look, I feel like it's all or nothing at this point, you know. Um, I'm either going to be known as the guy, like I mean on the street at the minute, the guy that, that was ripped off of a world title or I'm going to get one, you know, Sam... You know, great fighter. He's ticked all the boxes now at this point. My hunger for a world title, I think, should prevail and 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 and, and be enough to just get that edge. You know, but again, hats off to Sam for everything he's done in his career. He's a he's a warrior, and and I've proven I'm a warrior. It's going to make for a fantastic fight. You know, both of us fighting for our families and fighting for our livelihoods and um, and for a legacy. So it's a massive fight and. Uh, I'd be tuning in. Well, it, that's exactly right. I mean, you're both family men. Um, you're both prize fighters and, and both um, action-packed, fan-friendly fighters. I don't think you've ever been in a boring fight in your life, Sam. And the same can be said of you, Dennis. <clears throat> Do, what do you expect in this fight? Because I think on paper we, we would probably expect this to be a war where you both stand in the middle and, and trade and, and one that quite possibly goes the distance. Well, again, it's, um, you know, do, do, there's... There's going to be a bit of everything. It's going to be, you know, it's like they say, if you go swimming, you're going to get wet at some point. But who, who, can, who can sort of fight their fight more often, really? That's what it's going to come down to. And, um, you know, with the heart of both of us, uh, you know, it really, is, it really is going to be explosive. You've, you've both are highly decorated fighters. I think, I mean, Sam, you've got the edge in terms of the professional fights you've had. Um, Dennis, you've probably got the edge in terms of the world title experience that you've had. So far, but Sammy, you're 5'11", you, you, you're a very tall welterweight. Your physical attributes, including your reach, how much of an advantage do you believe that is for you? It's hard to say. I mean, you know, we were just talking about, you know, Hogan and, and 
you know, we come up short against Mungia, um, where people thought, you know, we might have won that, and you know, Mungia is not, not a small guy either. Mm. So mm. it just depends how, how he turns up and how I turn up, and just like he said, who can fight their fight, you know, for the longest part of this 12 rounder. Um, but again, I, 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 I trained for, for, for me. You know, I don't really train around opponents all that much. I make sure that I'm doing what I do well, you know, what, what I benefit with, and that's what we train on. Um, so if I can go in there and, and, and pull off a few of the things that we've been training on, then for a long enough time, then, you know, I've got this nailed. He's an awkward opponent, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, it, it's... I've had a few Dennis Hogan's opponents. a hard guy to train for. Yeah, I've had a few awkward opponents, so, I mean, it's nothing new. I mean, I've had, you know, close to 40 fights. I think this is the 40th, so it's nothing new. I've had a tr tricky opponents where, you know, that, that people have that people have said that I, I ain't got no chance against and, and I've come out, you know, on top before the last bell, so... It just depends on, you know, how, how people turn up on the night. I mean, you know, I, I feel like I've turned up for different fights and box different ways. Mm. Um, so, you know, your man could do exactly the same, you know, come Saturday night and, and come for it, or he could try and be tricky and, and move about. But again, you know, it's nothing that, you know, I presume either of us haven't seen before. So on the night, it, it will turn out for a good fight. But, um, but yeah, like I say, I'm here to defend the title and, and you know, I have, I have no doubt that you know, I'll be taking it on with me. You've got three kids waiting at home for you. You yeah. started young. You had your first when you were 17. Yeah. How important is it that you can continue putting um, putting bread on the table with, with these big <laughs> fights for them? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I say, um, you know, it's hard to talk about. You know, I've been away for a few weeks. So, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a big deal. Dennis, you, I mean, we think back to 18 months ago, the fight against um, Tim Zhu. Um, didn't go, obviously go the way you wanted. You've had to rebuild your career. And I, I know there was a, a, a point for you where you had to have some pretty serious, um, honest conversations with those around you about how much you wanted to go forward. You've rebuilt over the last um, couple of fights. A very impressive win um, over Tommy Brown. Another one against Wade Ryan, who had improved in, in leaps and bounds. Do, do you really believe that this is your last shot? Yeah, look, I, I do. It, it's, it's the last time I'd want to go back around again. I said after the Tim fight, I was like, I knew that wasn't my best. And I said, right, well, like you say, with the conversations to be had. And, uh, and I said, well, I'll just get back because I know I can get back to my best. If I can get back to my best, let, let's go again. And, um, and I've started, I've seen that with, with the first fight, the second fight. But, but this fight, like, I literally have gone above and beyond more than what I did for Mungia. So I believe that this will be my very best ever performance. I, like, there was nothing to chance where uh, performances between Mungia and now there has been a couple of things and life got in the way a few times and unfortunately I let it but at uh, this time there's been no stone unturned and um, and I'm going for this like a man possessed. The mind obviously is still there at, at 37 I'm 38 so it happens to the best of us but is do you, do you feel physically you're still responding the way you need to? Yeah 100% yeah I was asked this question by my manager Steve how do you feel still 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 fighting this I said in the performance, all good, but yes, I'm a bit more tired after the sessions. It takes a bit longer to recover, but you just got to be smarter on that. So yeah, I'm still, I'm still like a kid in terms of my legs, my my fitness, my my speed, sharpness. So yeah, I'm 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 ready to to, to recapture my youth on Saturday night. Do you believe that, Sam? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Um, my youth is not something that I'm here to recapture. Do you know what I mean? So you know, it's each to their own. Um, I'm here to defend about, um, and that's what I'll do. Let, let me ask you, I mean, you are 28, but as you said, 40 fights, a lot of them have been wars. Um, yeah. You would be um, aware, as, as anyone is, that there are only so many times you can yeah. go to the well, so to speak. How much do you still want to have those fights and, and th those hellacious bouts that, that go the distance where, I mean, you seem like the kind of fighter that, that, that is quite happy to, to, to have them and bleed and yeah. go to war? Yeah, I mean, like I say... Uh, Someone asked me this the other day, and you know the last few fights, you know the, um, the one got fought of the, uh, and it wasn't until I watched it back that I realised it, you know, it was a, a mad fight in there. They're all hard fights. Um, so when I got out and everyone was going wild about it, you know, I'm in the change room, people were talking about it and so on and so forth. To me, it was just a hard fight. 
you know, it was hard. They're all hard. You know, um, you don't get easy fights at this level. So, so yeah, it's not until you watch it back and you realise that, you know, it, you did go above and beyond. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just a norm. You know, it's a norm for me. I don't go out there and try and um, excite or 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 do anything like that. I just I just do me. Um, and it, you know, it, a lot of the time I always say you revert back to what you know. I know how to fight on my gum shield and have a, have, have a good fight. Um, so it, it, it's nothing new. You know, I've been doing it since you know early early days. So um, so yeah, you know, I know I know people say you know it, it takes toll. But I also say it takes toll when you don't want to do it. When you mm. don't want to do it mm. and you have to do it, that's when it takes a lot out of you. But it's all I know. So I, I've, done, I've done it in the amateur. I didn't get very far in the amateurs, but I sort of done the amateurs as a kid. You know, I just, you know, a bit down when I'm sure we went wild. So it's it's not, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. And I think if it, if I was having these sort of fights after boxing nice, you know, if I boxed nice up until a certain point in my career and then all the fights were hard, then it would take a lot out of you. Mm. But I, it's, it's the only thing I know. So um, it's just a norm to me, if I'm honest. Paulie Malignaggi, Liam Smith, Ashley Theopane, some really big names um, on your resume. Yeah. Same for you, Dennis, the, the likes of Tim Zhu, Jamie Munguia, Jamel Charlo. Um, how do you both think this fight finishes? I'll start with you, Dennis. Look, mate, I'm just looking to win, you know, every second of every round, and that's what, that's my plan. Win every second of every round and, 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 and get a decision. Sammy? I'm going to do what I normally do. Um... You know, if we have to chase him and, and and get the win, then we'll do that. If we have to stand in the middle of the ring and get the win, then we'll do that. But again, you know, like I said, I've left left nothing unturned. You know, all all camps are hard, um, and I'm here to defend the belt. I wouldn't I wouldn't fly this far. If I flew any further, we're going further home. So, <laughs> um, I wouldn't come this far for no reason. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The IBO Super Welterweight Champion, uh, Sam Eggington, the challenger, Dennis Hogan. It all happens uh, in Newcastle on Saturday night. A stacked card from No Limit, a a 20-fight card. These two are the headliners. Make sure you watch it because it's going to be an absolute banger.